What's going on, everybody? This is Living in Arizona Now, and today we're going to talk about the top 10 reasons why you should not move to Phoenix, Arizona. Now, we love Phoenix, but hey, no place is perfect, and there are things you need to keep in mind when considering a move to the Valley of the Sun. Let's do it. First up, let's talk about the water situation. You'll hear about this on the national news, you'll hear about it on the local news, and you'll hear it from locals who are saying, hey, we gotta watch out. We're gonna dry up and not have any water in the next 50 years. Now, Phoenix gets its water from the Salt River, the Verde River, the Colorado River, and it also has underwater aquifers. So there is water right now, and we do have full reservoirs down in the Salt River project, but the Colorado River is running low and more people moving here means more people pulling off of those resources means that, hey, if this continues, is it sustainable? And if we continue to stay in a drought where we're not getting as much precipitation as we were before, more people, less rainwater, that could be a problem. So people are saying, hey, what's going on here, guys? And unless the leaders of the state and the city come up with long-term viable solutions, you should be concerned. Next up, let's talk about cost of living. There was a point in time not too long ago that Phoenix was considered a undervalued destination. Well, guess what? Those days are in 2017 and they're not looking like they're coming back anytime soon. More people have moved here and there's less supply and more demand. You know what that means. Prices are going to go up. And with prices looking like they're going to stay near the level that they're at, the only other thing that could correct it would be a catastrophe for new home buyers who moved to Phoenix in the last three years, which would mean that their home values would decrease and they would be underwater in what they paid for the home. So it creates a market instability that also creates another problem. All of it is attached to the cost of living. And as the cost of living goes up, people can be forced out of their home and onto the streets, adding to the homeless crisis. Now, depending on where you're from, this can be an issue. Cactus, especially if you have animals, kids, or you like to walk outside barefoot. Cactus can be difficult. I personally don't mind cactus, but for new people moving here, if cactus is not your thing or you're not into the desert, that can be a real problem for someone coming from Washington State or Canada. Because cactus is known to pop basketballs, soccer balls, bike tires, even your own car tire, you get a sticker in your foot, it can be a real pain in the butt. Also, people trying to clean that up in their backyard, when they get a choya cactus, they don't realize how dangerous a choya cactus can really be. But all I'm saying is cactus might not be for everybody. It's fine for me, it's fine for many locals, but it might not be fine for people from out of state moving here. Next up, let's talk about the elephant in the room, the dry heat. Now, people say they don't mind dry heat over humidity. They actually prefer it. They say, hey, that oven feeling that you get when you step outside, that sweltering hot oven feeling is good compared to what you would get in say Florida or Texas or even Ohio where it gets a lot of humidity. Even Chicago can get sweltering heat. But with all that being said, when it's June, July, and August, and you're stepping outside and it's consistently every day over 110 degrees, after all, we did break records back in 2020, it can really wear on you. Maybe for three days you can handle dry heat and you're like, this is okay. But when it comes to five months out of the year, this extreme dry heat, it wears people down, especially if they're from other places. And if you go on hikes at two o'clock in the afternoon in July, make sure you're aware to drink a lot of water because heat stroke is a real thing. I'm not saying the dry heat's a deal breaker, but a lot of people can't handle it year after year, month after month. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the critters, the poisonous creatures. We've got scorpions, we've got rattlesnakes, we've got Gila monsters, we've got a whole bunch of different bugs that'll get you if you don't watch out. Now this isn't to scare you, this is just to tell you, those rattlesnakes, they do exist and they're in the desert and sometimes they will come up onto your porch, into your backyard. 
And it's not just snakes. Like I said, we've got even as killer bee swarms that will appear from time to time in the desert. You'll see and hear the bees swarming. So watch out for those. Also, we have Gila monsters. We have Chuckawallas. So many different lizards and reptiles out here in the desert, tarantulas. But let me put your mind to ease. I don't mind any of these. I don't mind the snakes. I don't mind the bees. They're all friendly. It's just some people, they really do not know how to cope with seeing a reptile like this in the desert or seeing a bee swarming around them because they're allergic. I'm not saying it's a deal breaker. I'm just saying that be aware these things exist. All right, let's talk about the most stressful, anxiety-inducing thing you will do all day, every day in Phoenix is drive. Public transportation in Phoenix, not really a thing. If you think you're going to move here and start riding the bus from Glendale to Tempe, good luck on that. You're going to need a car, and you're going to be on freeways, or you're going to be on surface streets. Some of these freeways here in Phoenix, you can go 65, 70, I think even 75 in some areas on the outskirts, maybe even the 303, don't quote me on the exact speed limit, but people go really fast. And even if they're not supposed to be going 75, they're going 75 plus all the time. And the reason people like to haul butt out here is because it's so spread out. Phoenix, if you look at the Phoenix metro area from Tempe all the way to Santan Valley, that's just the east side and it takes an hour to get there. If you go from Santan Valley to Glendale to the Cardinals game, that's an hour and a half. It almost feels like you're going to a whole other state sometimes. I mean, if you were in Rhode Island, that's how far away you would be going. Phoenix is massive urban sprawl. Next up, let's talk about flash floods. Flash floods are a bit different than regular flooding. Regular flooding is just when the water levels start rising and they come into your home. That's a big deal, right? Well, flash floods are dangerous because you'll be going through a dried up wash or river or creek in the Phoenix area. And the next thing you know, a big wall of water is coming off the mountain. And that surprise flooding comes up on you like a flash in a flash and it can wipe your car out. It can take you down the river with it and then you end up getting aerovac or helicoptered out, ending up on 12 News, News Channel 3, and you'll see that quite frequently. And in some cases, there's not going to be a happy ending. So do keep this in mind, especially if you have kids in the car when trying to cross a flooded street. All right, next up is a new problem that's come up. Too many people, so even though we have urban sprawl and we don't have a high population density, it just feels like going in all directions, there's people on top of people. And you feel this in other cities, but Phoenix has really just gone into an area of congestion. And where you feel it the most is in the driving, truly. One of the main reasons for this problem is because the city grew so fast, the infrastructure couldn't keep up with all the new people moving in. So it felt like everything was busting at the seams in some areas like Scottsdale and Gilbert. And then you have locals who live in places like Cave Creek or Santan Valley. And they say, hey, I, when I moved out here 10 years ago, it was peace and quiet. Now, all I have is a bunch of construction going on in all directions and people flooding the streets, creating a bunch of different problems. And even with all this action going on in the growing city, people still complain about lack of things to do. Now that's a matter of perspective because someone who's an outdoorsy type of person is like, are you kidding me? We have a ton of stuff to do. But if you're not an outdoors type of person, the cosmopolitan metropolitan feel in Phoenix is lacking. There's not a lot to do as, as you would expect for a big city. There's a little bit of history museums that you can go to, some science museums, a nice zoo, some pro sports teams, but outside of that, I mean, the only other thing that people do out here is go to parties, casinos, nightclubs, bars. Yes, they exist, but we're still lacking a bit of entertainment here in the Valley of the Sun. But hey, if outdoor stuff is your thing, you're gonna love Phoenix because we've got rivers, lakes, hiking, all that stuff. All right, this next one sure to upset some of the locals who are gonna disagree. But Phoenix is not really considered a foodie city. I mean, if you go back east and you compare the food quality to the food quality in Phoenix, you'll notice a difference. We have a lot of fast food out here in Phoenix. Now, of course, we have some amazing restaurants that you can go to across the valley, but in large part, you're gonna notice a difference in food quality, really, you will. 
The area we really shine is in southwestern cuisine, in particular Mexican food. This is where we really shine. We do have some great Mexican food restaurants. But outside of that, if you're into French food or Italian food, I wouldn't say it's going to be on the level of New York or some of the other premier cities across the country. And honestly, I think it has to do with the farming quality. I just don't think we're getting the freshest, finest foods uh, due to our location in the Southwest, far away from the agricultural regions of California, spread basket, or even the Midwest. I think this plays a factor, especially when you're trying to feed 5 million people and you don't grow your own food locally. All right, guys, with that being said, there's your... 10 reasons not to consider moving to Phoenix, Arizona. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. We'll see you on the next one.